This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, it's once again time for me to fulfill the wishes of my executive producers at Patreon.com, which means that today we're going to be looking at Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure. Oh sure, spoil the whole review with your facial expression. Don't you even want to try to make it a little more ambiguous? Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure, We. That's better. Yeah, I've got no hope for this one. Lady of the Tramp was a cute movie about an upper-class dog falling in love with a dog from the wrong side of the tracks, some complications arise, and they live happily ever after. It was good, but where do you go from there? It's just a couple of dogs falling for each other. This doesn't exactly lend itself to any grand storytelling potential. Then again, it is in the same mindset as Descendants. Take a beloved Disney property, squeeze a kid out of it, and profit. We're not even really continuing the story of Lady and the Tramp. They're barely in this thing. Instead, we're focusing on Scamp, their little terrier puppy who wants more than what his cushy home life could offer him. But because this movie is appearing on my show, it's time to address the first real problem, stemming from this big opening number. There's a buzzing in the air, children running everywhere, as all of us prepare for that once a year wonderful day. And the spirits are so high. Not only does this sound like South Park's quiet mountain town, it's Sunday morning in a quiet little white bread redneck mountain town. And not only does it not match the tone of the original movie at all. But, you'll notice that this movie is taking place around the 4th of July. Why is this a problem? Because when the last movie ended with Lady and Tramp having their litter, it bookended with the Christmas season. The bulk of the first movie happens when Lady is six months old, and now we have this movie telling us that Scamp should be roughly six or seven months old as well, since he was born in December, and now it's July. And yet he looks just as young in this movie as he did in the last movie. Not even Disney is immune from Canadian wolf pup syndrome. Maybe they had a second litter that was more recent? With three spaniel girls and a little terrier boy just like the first one? That's... very unlikely. With Darling and with Jim Deer, we've made a home from which we'll never roam. Oh, man. The casting of Jodie Benson as Lady was... not a good decision. Sometimes she does a pretty decent job of sounding like Lady's original voice, Barbara Luddy. Aw, oh, Tram. He's never been chained up before. He's just a pup. But when she sings, all I can hear is Ariel. With Darling and with Jim Deer, we've made a home from which we'll never roam. But then again, it's not really all that noticeable because she's barely in this movie. Much more noticeable is the awkward voice of Scamp. Yeah. I hate baths. Just the same, Scamp. When you live in a house, you need to be clean. <laughs> well, then I'm glad I'm a wild dog. Yeesh. I don't know how Scott Wolf got this part, but he does not sound like the little kid that Scamp is supposed to be. He does, however, sound like a young adult, which would be totally fine if he was meant to be one. But he's not. He's a puppy. Why did they write and design him to be a puppy when it would only make more sense for him not to be? Hey, let's do some dog stuff, hop hop! You know, dig up bones, 
rip up flowers, chase cats? Come on, Chief. Let's have some fun. Oh, lay off, copper, you overgrown pup, you. <laughs> and it's not like this movie didn't have any access to child actors. They cast a real little boy to play Junior here, and he's adorable! Why didn't they have him play Scamp? Scamp play! Scamp! Play ball! Yay! Yay! Uh -oh. Scamp gets in trouble for being the rambunctious little puppy that he is, and he's chained up in the backyard as punishment. He has to learn to live by the rules of the house. Firm discipline molds a pup into a dog. You turned out pretty good. Yeah, Pidge, but I found you. And if it weren't for you, I'd have wound up in the pound. I'm just trying to protect him. As far as character turns go, this isn't a bad one. One might think that Tramp would be a bit more defensive of his pup's right to, you know, just be a pup. But him being a father really forced him to grow up. After the more responsible Tramp has it out with his unrepentant delinquent of a son, Scamp meets a little girl puppy named Angel, who's cavorting around with some other strays. And with the way she immediately kisses him, again it makes me think that Scamp should be older. He's a young adult, itching to get out and take on the world, and then some hot bitch comes along to stir up his hormones. Hot bitch. What? She's a dog? She'd be designed to be as alluring as possible? What would you call her? And now it's time for another song that doesn't belong in this franchise. Far from here is where I want to be Somewhere out there, loose and running Nobody's leash to hold me Nobody's hugs to crush me Nobody's soap and scratchy comb To bathe and brush me A world without fences Where I can run free the more musically inclined in my audience might recognize the voice of Roger Bart singing for Scamp, so all I can hear is... I will beat the odds, I can go the distance, I will face the world, fearless, proud, and strong. He somehow escapes from his chain, when you think it'd be easier and more thematically appropriate for him to just slip free of his collar, and he meets up with Angel, who invites him to join her and the other junkyard dogs. If this movie doesn't end with Scamp being roasted, tossed on a bun, and covered in french fries and onions, I'm gonna be very disappointed. Angel, Angel, talk to me! Who's the king of the junkyard? Oh, you are, Buster. And she really needs to be older to make this less creepy! Hey, 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 watch it! Oh, be still my heart. I'm getting a bad case of puppy love. A really bad case of puppy love! Back off, lady! Nobody gets to join the gang without the okay from their leader, Buster. So he sings a song to convince Scamp why he should join the gang. We are the mutual unelite. An underclass from my head to feet. Our deeds are spiteful, our mischief pure. We got a natural disorder for which there's no cure. Why is he singing this song to seduce Scamp into the junkyard life when, by all outward appearances, he wants nothing to do with him? Shouldn't this be the part where he gives Scamp some impossible test, which of course Scamp passes and Buster has to begrudgingly accept him? Every day out here is like a test of survival. A test! <laughs> Beautiful! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Baby! I always get my best ideas when you're around. That's why you're my girl. I'm not your girl. Well, you're either his girl or his pre-dinner snack. Take your pick. Back at home, the whole family is worried about Scamp's disappearance. Well, almost the whole family. That Scamp is gonna get into so much trouble when he gets home! <laughs> yeah. Ugh, I've been trying to avoid talking about her since I really don't want to be an asshole. But like I said way back in my Tom and Jerry and the Wizard of Oz review, there are too many instances when Cat Sousy uses the same voice over and over and over again. In this case, Oh, hi, Tuffy. You're my favorite voice. Bye. Here he goes again. I told you there'd be no living with him. And Jeff Bennett's doing a good enough job with Tramp and Trusty. 
And he's even doing a really good Don Knotts impression for the dog catcher. Hold still so I can take in all peaceable like. A jock? Not quite hitting the mark. Was Alan Young unavailable? Bill Thompson was the original voice for Jock and Scrooge McDuck, so why not get the new Scrooge to play the new Jock? I can see where this is going to take some careful thought. Lady, Tramp, let's go. How does Jim Deere know that his name is Tramp? So they go out looking for Scamp, who is at the moment trying to sneak in and out of this alley belonging to this monster dog named Reggie. Really? His name is Reggie? I have a hard time imagining Reggie going down in the annals of Disney villainy. Anyway, this little encounter ends with Reggie being taken to the pound. You did everyone a big favor, okay? Oui, you are practically the hero! <laughs> hey, look at that! It's a French bulldog with a French accent! They got the stereotypes right! Nobody's movie will this make! Then, for no real reason, they all start talking about how awesome the tramp was. He taught Buster everything there is to know about being on the streets, Kay. Buster's trouble was Tramp's trouble. And Tramp's trouble was Buster's trouble, Kay. That dog was a prize. The one that got away. Got away from me, at least. Really? I know that sequels often want to relive the magic of moments from the previous movie, but... You're really gonna have this sultry lady dog singing about how Tramp was God's gift to women? I heard he once stole an entire meat wagon, okay? Wait, what? You're not gonna have that lady dog sing about how he was a tramp, but she loves him? Then what was the point of that setup? I guess they didn't want to be that shameless. Could they at least be shameless enough to have these strays be the ones from the first movie gabbing on about Tramp's awesomeness? Sure, those dogs would know him and speak highly of him. But is Tramp a legend to everyone in this town? Why? For his ability to evade the authorities? Seems like these dogs have that pretty well in hand. Why is Tramp so special? Apparently Tramp is so special because he took Buster under his wing, and Buster didn't like Tramp running off to be with his lady. Even a prissy little name still leaves a bad taste in my mouth, lady. <laughs> He met his true love. He betrayed me! Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with his world. You can't have a family and still be a junkyard dog. So I gave Tramp a choice. It's either me or her. And he picked life on the end of a chain. Hooked up with a real powder puff. Sleeping on carpets. Free room and board. Living the cushy pillow life! <sighs> Uh-oh! Someone had some daddy issues. And that's what I learned the first rule about being a junkyard dog. Buster's trouble is Buster's trouble. Hey, 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 hey. The tramp used to scratch like that. You ain't related, are you? Shouldn't his scent have tipped you off more than the way he scratches? Scamp can't get his little doggy head around how his dad was the great junkyard dog of legend, but Angel thinks having a family isn't so bad. Let's just say you're lucky you've never had to live with a family. Wrong again, Tenderfoot. You mean, you had a family? Actually, I've had five families. You've had five families when you're only a few months old? You are a horrible puppy! Maybe five families over a year or two would make her the victim of unfortunate circumstances, but I agree with you. Why not just make her an older dog? The junkyard dogs aren't much of a family. What choice do I have? What more do you need? As a junkyard dog, you can stay up late, or dig, or Run. yeah, or or play, or dig, or Run. Right, or chase squirrels. No, I mean run. Uh oh! Look out, chief! They escape with only getting a little wet for their trouble, and Tramp and his pals are having no luck tracking their quarry. Oh look! Scamp! A wig? Ah, you smell the wig, man! You're hopeless. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Lady. I shouldn't have been so hard on him. Wait, Angel didn't hear them calling out for Scamp? And Scamp didn't hear the train coming up behind them. These dogs can't hear for doggy-doo. 
Then, because the movie has to, we get a little montage of these two children falling in love. I never had this feeling before. No, 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 no. You're supposed to recreate Bella Note, not Can You Feel the Love Tonight? Ew, they even put Scamp on his back like when Nala was giving the bedroom eyes. It's so crazy, something in my life is better than... Oh, hey, look at that. They're paying homage to that scene where Lady was also wearing a firefly necklace. Just don't let those fireflies bring zombies to life with their magic juice. Remember how that weird kid from down the block used to smash him and rub the glow stuff all over his face like war paint? And it still glowed even after the fireflies were all mushed up. Also, Angel's speaking parts are provided by Alyssa Milano, but her singing voice is Meg from Hercules. Why not just have Meg from Hercules do her throughout the entire movie? Angel pretty much is Meg in dog form, so why not? Then they just happen to wind up at Tony's? Come on, movie. You couldn't even have Angel take Scamp to one of her haunts. Hello, it's crazy. I can hardly speak whenever she says hi. I didn't know that I could feel. I never dreamed that I could feel. I didn't. Ugh, you did it wrong, movie. This would have been funny if you set it up like they're going to reenact the spaghetti scene from the first movie. But then they do this and throw us for a loop. But after they already go through the motions? Sorry, movie. It's too little too late. And stop being sexy with each other. You're puppies! Why couldn't they make these pups older? And the only reason Tony and Joe were so invested in Butch and his Kakara Spanish girl was because he was their dog as far as they knew. Who is Scamp or Angel to them? No one! Their ogling them makes no sense! They nonchalantly make their way to Scamp's neighborhood, and Scamp sees how much his family misses him. Gosh, I didn't think they'd miss me that much. You didn't think they'd miss you? Why are you offended by this? With all the crap that you've had to endure with your families, you should be surprised that they miss him. It must have been horrible having someone care about you that much. I need to be wild and free. I'll never find that here. I'd give anything to have what you have. And I'd give anything to have what you have. Go. Yeah, not exactly the same disagreement that Lady had with Tramp, is it? Who is Trixie? Trixie? And Lulu, and Fifi, and Rosita Chiquita, well, well, whatever her name is. Chiquita Chiquita, oh, oh, yes, well, I, I can As far explain. as I'm concerned, you needn't worry about your old heel. My, my, my heel? I don't need you to shout and protect me. Yes, but, 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 If you but, grow but, careless, don't blame me. And I don't care if the Cossacks do pick you up. Goodbye. And take this with you. Scamp has one more test to take before becoming part of the gang. One would think that sending Reggie to the pound would be enough, but whatever. And he has to steal this chicken from his family. <laughs> Regardless of how you may feel about the Siamese cats, it can't be denied that they're two of the most memorable elements from the original movie. If the powers that be are afraid of making them offensive because they were originally speaking with broken English, there are two options. One, maybe Aunt Sarah could drop a little exposition about how they're actually from Siam, so of course their English is going to sound a little bit stereotypical. Or two, don't include them at all. As they are, they add nothing to the story, so why are they even here in the first place? If they and Aunt Sarah were just cut from the film entirely, I'm pretty sure no one would miss them. Tramp, Scamp, and Buster butt heads over where Scamp's future lies. Scamp decides that he wants to keep living on the streets until he gets chased by the dog catcher again. Buster! I'm barking at you because I forgot how to talk! But yeah, Scamp gets taken away by the man, and since ripping off the first movie beat for beat wasn't enough, now we gotta rip off an American tale. Always there to welcome you in winter. Arms wide to welcome you to stay.
nice try movie, but a handful of distant characters thinking in harmony isn't exactly the same as distant characters singing in harmony. Ironically, Scamp just happens to pass Angel, who runs back to Lady and Tramp to tell them where he is. The irony is even more irony y, as Scamp gets tossed into the same kennel as Reggie. Wow. The last movie implied that dogs without owners were eventually put down, but in this movie, they just toss in strays with the giant gorilla dog that'll eat you as fast as you can blink. That's... efficient. Somehow, Tramp gets there in time to save Scamp, when you think that Reggie would have just popped in like a chicken nugget. Seems like this would be a bit more dramatic if Tramp was fighting Buster, but what do I know? It looks like Scamp's been injured, but of course he's perfectly fine with absolutely no licking of wounds required. And Dad's too much of a badass to be horrified by the fireworks exploding behind him. Scamp gets his collar back, he tells Buster off. Ah, hey, you missed, scamp -a loser <laughs> That's my boy. He just killed another dog by dropping a dresser on his head. That's my boy. They all get home. Jim Deere and Darling take in Angel. The other junkyard dogs find their own forever homes off screen. And they all live happily ever after. Ah, uh, yes. And what modern Disney film would be complete without the credits rolling to a horrible pop cover of a classic song? Lovely. So, that was Lady and the Tramp 2, Scamp's Adventure. <laughs> this has got to be one of the most pointless sequels I've ever seen. The continuing story of these characters who have been endearing audiences for decades is completely overlooked in favor of a whiny little ingrate who has no idea what he wants out of life. The plot reads like it was written over the screenwriter's lunch break. The songs are bland and forgettable. The voice acting is all kinds of meh. And this is another movie that insists on being a love story between small children. Would it really be so impossible to make Scamp and Angel just a little bit older? Throwing nothing more than a couple of months at them would be perfectly fine. If you're assuming that kids would be interested in a sequel to Frickin' Lady and the Tramp, are you not also assuming that they're capable of following adult characters? Getting anything other than boredom out of your audience is hard enough without squicking them out. Sadly, this will not be the squickiest thing that Decendiary 2 has to offer. Be sure to RSVP for next week when we attend Descendants the Royal Wedding. See you later. He's a tramp. But they love him Breaks a new heart Every day He's a tramp They adore him And I only hope He'll stay that way He's a tramp He's a scoundrel He's a rounder He's a cad He's a tramp But I love him Yes, even I have got it pretty bad You can never tell when he'll show up He gives you plenty of trouble I guess he's just a no-count pup But I wish that he were double He's a tramp He's a rover and there's nothing more to say If he's a tramp, he's a good one And I wish that I could travel his way Wish that I could travel his way Wish that I could travel his way Subscribe, like, follow.